Last time on Iron Valor, a lot of stuff happened. That annoying kid, Ferris, thought that he was gonna get me in trouble for letting people into the restricted section, which, yeah, okay. I did it, but, um, didn't think it was a problem. He had a warrant, fake or not. It's Lark Lancer. Um, he's he's kind of grabbing on to Orin's uh, to Orin's robes, and he goes, "See, see, there she is! I told you, I told you! She let him down there, and she didn't even have anyone unsupervised." And Orin approaches you, and he says, <sighs> "Elowin, Ferris here yeah. has um told me the, some troubling news." Yeah. <sighs> Did you allow What's that? some of the library's patrons down into the restricted area? He, she did, she did, unsupervised. He's like a cop or something. Like I'm not supposed to say, or one of them was a cop. Maybe they were both cops. One of them was hot and one of them was a cop. I don't know. Well. Why? Uh, Elwin, you know the rules. If you send someone down into the restricted area, you must accompany them. There are things down there that mortal eyes shouldn't be seeing. So, if you would please, I know, I know, you're trying to get you're, you're trying to get through your novel and everything. Bring it down there with you. Very Just important. make sure they don't touch anything. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Ferris. What? You thought you got me. Now I get to go on a field trip. You can man the desk. Enjoy. Uh, 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 Orin, Orin, are you gonna? Well, there is someone does have to manage the desk while while Elowin is gone. Success made Ferris man the front desk. So who won in the end, Ferris? That's what I thought. Anyway, so we get into the restricted section, right? Filled with smoke. Well, like, not right away. Right away, everything was normal. Mm, yeah, but then, then it wasn't. All this dark smoke came in through all the cracks, and we were trapped. We couldn't get out, and most of us passed out pretty quick. A couple of people managed to keep their wits about them. Constable Lightbringer, who is a gem dragon uh diamondy and um yeah she's strong anyway that's not what we're talking about right now i believe it was the professor was the other one who managed to uh keep their wits they noticed at least the professor that uh that black smoke was actually maybe ink from the books there were words and everything and um i was sleeping so i didn't get any of that but that's fine <sighs> all right um, he'll, uh, begin to leave, um, and suddenly, the door slams shut in his face. <gasps> he pauses for a second, <laughs> and he turns and he looks back at Elowin. Probably Ferris. He's mad that he has to man the desk. Yeah. He uh, shakes the door a little bit, tries to open it up still as it open and suddenly you all hear what sounds like a thousand mirrors breaking or the largest chandelier you've ever seen just shattering into a million pieces gregory's looking for abateo like knowing that in the room with destroyed us? it no on the, room, like the outside of the room yes oh come on i didn't even get to do that one <clears throat> what did you do um, nothing Yet? That's not supposed to happen, little like, one. at all. Little one, he, he starts shaking at the door a little bit more frantically now, trying to get it open, and this, this black mist begins to seep its way into the restricted We wake up <laughs> on the grounds of this estate mansion, right? And there's the cemetery, and so, of course, we go to check out the cemetery. Like, you're in the grounds of a spooky place, you don't know where you are, go to the cemetery, that makes sense, right? Hmm, well, anyway, all the names on it said, Coldhorn. We had this patron a while back in the library, Festandia, right? 
And when I say patron, I mean like patron patron, not like patron, but kind of both. Like she gave us all of her books in her will. Kind of interesting, better than sitting behind the desk at Candlekeep for sure. Uh, but I don't want to let on that I'm like too interested. <coughs> Um, uh, oh God. notice that, uh, oh, baby, of, that... This, ap this appears to be a family. Whole, whole corns. That's okay. O L K H O R N X. Whole corns. Owen, do you, do you remember this, this family's name? Uh, most of, I... most of her stuff got <laughs> donated to the library. You would have recognized the name. Um, Fistandia, she was a frequent purveyor of the of the library. She she came in, she she had like all the punches on her little punch card. She came oh, in. Yeah, yeah. She came hey. in pretty frequently. Um she donated a lot of books to the library. Um a lot of the um a lot of the older members of of the uh, of the staff recognized her and they always spoke of her fondly. Uh she she wrote a couple of books that she would donate to the library. Any any of her uh, studies, you know, um, it, it's not not just a necromancy. She also um, she well, she really she studied all the schools of magic, but she was mostly known for necrotic and conjuration magic. We get into this graveyard, and this thing comes out of the mausoleum, and we haul our butts straight back over that wall, except for Constable Lightbringer. She is just facing this fiend thing down. She gets bit by it, she's bloody, and then she floats, because she's dragonborn, she's got these like wings, right? And then the professor floats, and I'm thinking, I can't heal these goons when they're floating. So um, that's, I just kind of like emitted some light, did a little bit of healing, no big deal, no big deal. That's what, I mean, that's what my patron gave me. Anyway, Lightbringer obviously killed the fiend. Everything was fine. Some people helped, I'm sure. Uh, we get this idea that, like, Fistandia is maybe reincarnating her relatives or bringing them back from the dead. Not too sure exactly. Um, you suddenly, you hear, kum, 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 oh, no. as the, uh, as the gates leading into the, um, leading into the graveyard slam shut. You begin to hear banging from the inside of the mausoleum, like frantic, like pow, 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 pow. The banging suddenly stops, and the door creaks. I'm gonna cast Divine Sense again. Divine Sense, okay. You detect a, you detect the presence of a fiend directly in front of you. Crystal Hyde crunches as, 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 as you feel, as you feel a, a sharp pair of teeth latch onto your heel. Elwyn is looking up at the people flock. No, no, you are not going up there, Elwyn. Elwyn looks up at the people flying, just what the heck is wrong with you people? And um, is going to kind of bonus action. <sighs> and they start emitting light. And this light goes up to uh, the constable and will heal you. You felt a, 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 a slight, a slight gust of wind, almost <laughs> as if this creature took flight for a second. And you take your hammer and you spit it <laughs> and wow, smash into it. And you see a dead <laughs> imp, the what? corpse of the corpse of an imp laying there. And he's, yeah, like, like he's all bloodied and battered and you know, he's, he's, he's one of his one of his wings isn't really working a little bit, and he is laying there, of course. So we decide to explore the mansion. We go in. There's like this kind of weird churchy place, kind of an altar. Uh, the professor finds a book, and then we found a library. That big, big thing. Okay, so the library was full of those books that Fastandia gave to Candlekeep. We get this idea that maybe it's like a dimension, like an alternate dimension or a pocket dimension or some something, something weird's going on. It doesn't take you long because you've probably read a good bit of the books in Candlekeep. Um, you yeah, notice, get bored easily. You know a lot of these books. In fact, huh. you might venture to say with, with a dirty 20, you know damn near all of these books 
I'm supposed to be in Candlekeep. Yeah, that's what Elwyn is gonna find wherever and I went. Okay, so all of these books huh? that you are all looking at right now, they belonged to Festandia. Uh and they were given to us to Candlekeep, right? Um right. when she died. But now they're here. Mm. Do with that what you will. <clears throat> Straddle it. So I've been reading through this book. The one we found on the author. Uh -huh. it, it seems she she dabbled in pocket dimensions. You know, like Mordenkind's magnificent mansion. Any you familiar oh, with okay. that? Okay. Yeah. It's like like just like little. Spell. So. Open up a door. Room. Wood stone. That that's where Did we're I? at now. I think. After an hour, it disappears. This Did one's you? permanent. Ooh. Well, Whoa. probably good. Which um... means maybe all these books, they, these are just double copies now. They did. They didn't get the actual books donated to your library. That's weird. It almost like feels that. like we're back in time. I, exactly what I was thinking, Constable. But, but the, there's more here in the margins, in intermixed within the, the necromancy. Constable, calm down. Don't smash the book. Here. And so we go around like, all right, you know, got to check some things out, figure some things out, right? Cursed blades. Weapons? No, cursed blades. And then these suits of armor come to life. Like, full on sinew and and bone and then there they are attacking us super gross Ew. fighting these things some invisible thing laughed at me in my ear and then stabbed me in the back like blood real blood okay yes it hurt i'm i'm injured it's not a good place to be i'm not happy about it but you know what i'm really unhappy about that was an expensive dress, okay? Like, I don't have all of the money in the world. Like, yeah, I could probably buy it if it existed, but it's limited edition. So I'm going to have to find somebody who has the mending spell and get them to fix my dress. And also I'm bleeding, but we won. So, uh, cheers, I guess. Mm -hmm. Hey, that one, that one. That one and that one are uh, slightly necrotic. <laughs> slightly necrotic. The like is just so casual. <laughs> She'll reach into her bag and pull out like a, a, a blanket, kind of <laughs> like a moving blanket almost. And I kind of destroy these back at the office. Gen gently take them, wrap them up, uh, <laughs> like she's handling like demonic. Uh, gently. You know. I've never seen her handle something gently. <laughs> <laughs> she gives you a death glare. Like, so. <laughs> Hang on. So there's you all touch, the dangerous ones. You touch one of you touch one of the uh one of the sort one of the blades. The blanket. The, the blanket. The yeah. Blanket all, oh, the blanket. Yeah. All right. Um. As as the uh as you touch the blanket and you wrap up the swords, they begin to cling and clang together. Um. These uh, yeah, they shake and they and they and they begin to come to and one of the swords flies into and you see this ethereal hand appear. This ethereal figure appear through the uh through the armor and like it kind of it kind of wraps its it kind of wraps itself you see like like blood kind of materialize and wrap itself around and then like you know the uh skeleton skin and, and then the skin wraps up over the muscle and you see these uh you see these knights appear with swords and we will as you as you went to uh to cast your to to to, ca to cast your spell you hear, like right, right, like right next to your ear. You hear. <laughs> I like excuse me, and the spell goes completely off, like into the other, onto the other wall, yes. bounces off. Did anyone? Did anyone hear that? Was that me? Am I going a little bit? Am I? I assume none of us heard that. Um. Elwyn, watch it. 
I mean, no one else is seeing these Sorry. giant number Hugo, rocks Hugo, flying you around either. You, uh, Hugo, give me a perception check. See, well, what's your passive perception? Ooh, that's a good. Because uh, you're not you're not making checks right now. Passive perception twelve. Twelve. No, you didn't see it. No, you didn't hear it. I just heard something laugh. Sorry, my bad. Uh, I'll show you up next time. Someone else go. <laughs> All right, Eloise, at, the end, at the end of your turn, shoot, you get attacked, my dear. All right, fine. Does an 18 hit? <laughs> yeah, an 18 definitely hits. An 18 oh definitely hits, yes. Uh, yes, it, whis it whispers into your, ear, into your ear, and then you feel this sharp, piercing pain in your back, as if you've just been stabbed. Oh, heck! Oh, heck. Mm. <laughs> what? I think something just stabbed me. It's probably one of those stupid things from the graveyard. Uh, <sighs> is there blood on my dress? I paid a lot of money for this. Is there blood? Uh, is there blood? I mean, is there blood? I like Am I bleeding? It's, it's Eloise's blood, but yeah, there's blood. <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's, oh. there's definitely blood back there. This is designer. Uh, you take five points of damage, and let me get you to make a... Constant. 